Hi there, it's Mr. Clark. Welcome to Lesson 7.3.4 on expanding the basic phrase model. So now we've added three more chords. Instead of just one and five, we now also have six, four, and two. So now that we have this larger set of chords, the power of the basic phrase model comes into focus. Instead of having a random series of Roman numerals, that's like, yes, you have correctly identified what those chords, what those words are. Now we can start to see what they mean in terms of phrases because we have this consistent tonic to predominant to dominant to tonic framework, and we can see how those chords fit into that and or disrupt it. So uh, right now I'm just going to use the major forms for clarity, but the same principles apply to minor. So we have our tonic section that starts out. Right now the main tonic chords we use are 1, 1, 6. Uh, 6 can also substitute in some contexts, especially deceptive cadences. You can also expand tonic with inversions of 5 or 5, 7. We saw this before. Um, but these aren't cadential. These just kind of expand tonic. They're just kind of decorative. Uh, and you can also embed a basic phrase model within tonic. So what does that mean? So this is all a tonic expansion. There are no cadences going on. And this is the prelude number one in C major, where you start out by just arpeggiating tonic only twice, not four, like I tried to lie to you before. So. Yeah, so it doesn't really feel like we have cadence. It's still going to go on to other places, and it's actually going to be a while before a clear cadence. But we have a one chord, which is a, a tonic chord on our first glance. We have a 2-4-2 two, two chord. You can sometimes add a seventh on. In this case, it's on the bottom to keep that common tone, nice, smooth voice leading. That, that's a predominant chord. You have 5-6-5, five, five, which is itself a dominant chord. Again, smooth voice leading. It's an inversion because we have in the bass 1-1-7, one, one, then back to 1, a tonic chord. So you could look at this and say, hey, well, that's tonic predominant, dominant tonic. But on a more global level, this is all just a tonic expansion. So we have our Roman numeral level of analysis. This is a, like a first level contextual analysis. And then we have a second level contextual analysis. We've taken the basic phrase model and we've like tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic. And we've said, Ooh, smoosh it all into tonic. And then you'll still have a global predominant, dominant, tonic going up. So predominant, you're moving away from tonic, but you can still return if needed, uh, mostly 6, 4, and 2. Remember in minor that we only use 2 in first inversion because we don't like reposition diminished triads. 6 goes to 4 goes to 2, be like we were talking about before with this chain of going down the chain but not backwards, except for plagal cadences. And if there are any 7 chords, make sure to resolve the chordal 7th down by step. Dominant, your function is just to return to tonic. It's just 5 and 5, 7 for now, and their inversions. And that is most often to some kind of 1 chord. It can also be to a 6 chord if you have deceptive cadence. And then tonic, we're back home. So as you're doing analysis, it's typical for the proportions to be like tonic. Lots of tonic, then predominant, dominant, tonic right at the end. So if you see something like that a lot, good. That's normal. That's how a lot of phrases work, where you're just kind of hanging out in the tonic area for a while, and then... Oh, we're heading somewhere, we're there, and we resolve. So that's what's going on, and I'll see you.